I just finished my fourth antibiotic. So I thought I would answer one of the most common questions about prednisone and antibiotics. And that is, is prednisone an antibiotic? And the answer is no, prednisone is not an antibiotic. What it is instead is a steroid anti-inflammatory medication that is often given with an antibiotic. So you might have an infection like a sinus infection or bronchitis or something, and your doctor prescribed an antibiotic and a steroid like prednisone. And they'll often prescribe them together, one to help with the inflammation, the swelling, the redness, the yucky cough or something like that, and the other to kill the bacteria. That's what an antibiotic is. I'm Dr. Megan, the prednisone pharmacist, and I've made hundreds of videos all about prednisone side effects. But today I decided to talk about antibiotics and antibiotic side effects and how to counteract them. Because I've personally been going through four antibiotics in the last two months and it's been a miserable experience. And so I thought I'd share what you need to know to make it as pleasant as possible to have while you're taking antibiotics. So First, I wanted to talk about what is an antibiotic? What is it used for? So antibiotics are used for bacterial infections. I personally, most recently was taking it for strep throat and that is a clear cut, straight diagnosis. They can just swab your throat and find out whether you're positive for strep throat or not. And strep is a short version of streptococcus. And so that means you have an actual bacterial infection. Antibiotic is for bacterial infections. They are not used for viral infections like COVID or flu or lots of kinds of colds or pneumonias because of a viral infection. And so you don't generally use an antibiotic to treat them unless they find out that it is caused by a bacteria. And so there are some infections that are clearly bacterial and so you should clearly use an antibiotic for them and then there are others that are clearly viral and you should never use an antibiotic for them and then there are some in the middle that are less clear cut that could be bacterial or they could be viral and it's hard to tell even if you're a doctor those include sinus infections bronchitis and others. And so you want to be sure that what you're taking it for is truly a bacterial infection because you don't want to have to take an antibiotic unless you absolutely must. This isn't something we mess with because what are the risks of taking an antibiotic long-term or taking it unnecessarily? Here are some of those risks. First is development of antibiotic resistance. So when they first invented or discovered penicillin, hundred years ago, it was amazing. Like it was truly a miracle and saved millions of lives. And at the time it was the only medication that our bodies had ever been exposed to that was an antibiotic. But over time, the bacteria that we were using the penicillin to treat figured it out and they figured out ways to bypass the way the penicillin was working. So we had to create even better drugs and new ways of attacking the bacteria. So some of those ways, first the penicillin worked one way, and then we had some that would like create a spear and break the cell wall of the bacteria. And there's so many ways that the antibiotics work. The idea is they attack something that is unique to bacteria and that is not common in our cells, human cells. And so sometimes our immune systems can get confused though. Taking the risk of taking antibiotics can really mess with our immune system. So it can weaken our immune system because it's disrupting the gut biome, the gut microbiome. So our gut from our mouth all the way to our anus is filled with a biome, a microbiome. That's a like a little world where all of the little tiny microorganisms live whether it's bacteria, good bacteria, bad bacteria, trillions of them in our system, viruses that live there, yeasts, and they they live in this special balance. And we want more of the good bacteria and the rest of them to be in a very delicate dance. And when we take an antibiotic, it kills a lot of bacteria, not just the one we want to kill. Like for me, it doesn't just kill the ones that are in my throat. It kills them all the way down my gut 
all of them that could be susceptible to the way that antibiotic kills bacteria. And so the microbiome in our gut is vital for so many things. Those bacteria help break down our food so that we can actually use the pieces in the food and absorb them and, you know, have it work. And if we wipe out all of those good bacteria, then those bacteria also are one of the strongest parts of our immune system is in our gut and it's killing off that. And those bacteria also help create neurotransmitters like serotonin. Serotonin is um, like our happiness hormone. It helps us keep a balance between happiness and sadness. People who have depression have low serotonin. People who have seasonal affective disorder have low serotonin. And the bacteria in the gut help make serotonin. And so if we're wiping them out, you might be a little more sad than usual because you don't have the right balance of these really vital neurotransmitters. And then finally is you might have unnecessary allergic reactions. And I've had more than my fair share of those. And so you don't want to run those risks. So basically only take antibiotics if the benefits outweigh the risks and you know for sure that what you're taking it for is clearly a bacterial infection. Okay, let's move on to what side effects can you get from antibiotics. So I've personally taken many antibiotics and just four in the last two months. And so I wanted to just go through some of the antibiotic side effects I've experienced really quickly and then go into the more common ones. And finally, the rare but serious ones. All right. So amoxicillin is one of the most common antibiotics. It's usually very well tolerated. The funny thing I always notice is the smell of my urine is the same as the smell of the capsule because you're peeing it out completely unchanged. And when I was a kid, I loved the taste of the pink liquid antibiotic. It's the best tasting antibiotic. So if you're a parent and you have the choice, I would choose amoxicillin. And then amoxicillin's big brother, basically amoxicillin married to clavulonic acid, is called augmentin. And it's basically two ways of attacking the bacteria. And that one's really broad spectrum, really powerful and causes a lot of side effects. And the ones I've personally had include diarrhea, stomach cramping. And another one that's really common is nausea. I didn't really get that, but I get like very painful gut issues from Augmentin. Let's move on to the cephalosporin antibiotics. So the first most common one is called Keflex or Cephalexin. Keflex is very common. I remember prescribing it I mean, not prescribing it, dispensing it tons of times when I worked in a retail pharmacy. And for me, I don't really get any side effects to cephalexin. It's very well tolerated. And then the next level up that I had to take this time was called ceftin or cefuroxime. And this one, I took it, but it, I don't think it fully cleared up my infection because I had to take another antibiotic right after it. That was the augmentin. And that one didn't fully clear it up either. And so I had to take Omnicef which generic name of that is Ceftonir. And that one I, I tolerated quite well. While I was doing it, I was doing some really important preventative measures to help support my gut. So stay tuned to the end to find out what those are. And then I've had surgeries and I had to take antibiotics for that. And one of them, I got cellulitis after the surgery and I took an antibiotic and then it gave me an even worse rash. And so that was no good. And then when I was a baby, I got an infection And my parents said that I woke up on Easter morning, a spotted little Easter bunny from taking Bactrim. And getting a rash as a side effect is quite common. And they can be just red spots or something like that. Or they can be itchy red spots. Or you can get really serious rashes that can actually like make your whole body react. And it's called Stevens Johnson syndrome. And it's terrible, very rare, but it's as if your whole body is burned. And it's incredibly rare, but can be fatal. And then the whole reason I became the prednisone pharmacist is because I had to take prednisone for bleeding disorder. And that was after I took dicloxacillin and clindamycin for mastitis. And so I don't know if that bleeding disorder was directly caused by the antibiotics, but it was right after. So it kind of makes sense. Who knows? So to clearly outline what the side effects are and how common they are, how frequently people get them. There are five common side effects. The first one is gastrointestinal issues. I already described a little bit for me, and these are relatively common. According to a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, 
approximately 20% of patients who take antibiotics experience GI issues such as nausea, diarrhea, and stomach pain. So that's pretty common, one in five people. And then the second thing that people often get are allergic reactions, such as skin rashes, itching, or swelling. And the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology found that five to 10% of individuals taking antibiotics develop allergic reactions. The next most common is yeast infections. So the way this is happening is we're killing off all the good bacteria in our gut and then the yeast that was already there finds open real estate, nobody to compete with, and they grow, they get out of control. Instead of being in balance with the bacteria and viruses that are already there, they get out of control and so you get a yeast infection. And yeast infections are common, affecting around one in five women who take antibiotics. And then number four is antibiotic associated diarrhea causing a brand new infection called C. diff or Clostridium difficile diarrhea. And it's estimated to occur in between five to 25% of people who take antibiotics and usually it goes away on its own. But for some people, a C. diff can cause really horrible, horrible diarrhea that can become so severe, they become dehydrated and can even die. And so if you're getting really severe diarrhea after taking an antibiotic and you're not able to you know, keep fluids down, they're just going right through you, you need to talk to your doctor immediately because they need to help you. You may need to be hospitalized. So that's one that you don't want to mess with. Number five is photosensitivity. So some antibiotics, not all, cause an increased sensitivity to sunlight. And so if you were to take the antibiotic and then go out in the sun, go skiing or um, go swimming or something, and you normally don't get a sunburn, you may get a sunburn while taking or a few days after taking certain antibiotics. Check the prescription bottle. It'll usually have a little sticker saying sunlight or something on it, or ask your pharmacist to see if your antibiotic can cause that side effect. And that can happen in approximately two to 10% of people who take certain antibiotics. And the most common class of antibiotics that causes that are called tetracyclines. So then some really important ones to know about, but are really, really rare include liver damage. So antibiotic induced liver damage as a side effect is estimated to affect one in 10,000 individuals taking antibiotics. So that's your liver. Next one is your kidneys. Kidney problems such as acute interstitial nephritis or acute kidney in injury occur in about one in a thousand patients. And then tendonitis. So the tendons, usually the tendon in um, like your Achilles tendon on the back of your leg, tendonitis or tendon rupture are rare and are associated with certain antibiotics. And the risk is one in 10,000 patients who take antibiotics. And finally, blood disorders including anemia or low platelet count are rare side effects experienced by about one in a hundred thousand individuals. I happened to be one of them possibly. I took antibiotics and then I had low platelets. My doctor says I, it probably wasn't that because she said normally once you stop taking the antibiotic, your platelets are repaired and you're able to continue making platelets again. Whereas in my situation, I stopped taking the antibiotic, started taking prednisone to stop the autoimmune destruction of my platelets, and it continued even though there was no more antibiotic in place. So she said it wasn't my situation, but it potentially caused some sort of immune dysregulation where my immune system learned how to kill platelets from the antibiotic. And then that caused my autoimmune system to attack the platelets and kill them off. I really have no idea most like they didn't even know what caused my condition itp it used to be called idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura in the past and then they just recently changed the name to immune thrombocytopenia because they realized it's part of the immune system so they just don't know enough about it since it's so rare so you're having side effects what can you do to manage them to prevent them to recover from antibiotics to counteract antibiotic side effects Here's some great tips. So the first thing is we want to make sure the antibiotic actually works so you don't have to take another antibiotic later. So to take it exactly as prescribed. And 
following the instructions on the bottle and on the printouts you receive from the pharmacy. Some antibiotics need to be taken without food. Some need to be taken with food. And you need to follow that exactly so that you're actually absorbing the antibiotic. So it's actually getting to where it needs to go. Otherwise, it's just going straight through your gut and not doing anything where it needs to be doing it. Stay hydrated. Drink lots of water while you are taking it so that you don't get kidney problems. If you're taking an antibiotic that has sun sensitivity issues, then use um, sunscreen and avoid direct sun exposure. And then if you have allergies to other antibiotics, be sure to tell your doctor because some allergies cross react. And so if you have an allergy to penicillin, it might be more likely you have an allergy to another medication and so on. And so be sure that you always have updated the list of allergies to medications with your doctor's office. And if you're having issues, definitely tell your doctor. So that's how to make sure that we're getting what we need to and preventing the side effects if possible. Now we've taken the antibiotic or we're taking the antibiotic and we know that it's affecting our gut microbiome. What can we do to repair it, to recover from taking the antibiotic? Is there anything you can do during it? So pharmacies usually carry a medication it's not a medication, it's a supplement, a probiotic called Fluorogen. And Fluorogen is designed to, it says, reduce for antibiotic side effects. It's a probiotic and they created specifically for people who have to take antibiotics. And this one is for women because women get more likely to get yeast infections. And so if you take this with the antibiotic. The idea is it's going to decrease your chance for yeast infections and help heal your gut microbiome. But you don't want to take it the exact same time as the antibiotic because is the antibiotic is going to kill the bacteria in here, the good bacteria. So while you're taking your antibiotic, say you're prescribed twice a day antibiotics and you're supposed to take them every 12 hours. So you take your morning dose at 8 a.m. and your bedtime dose at 12 p.m. So you have this 12 hour window. So you can take your probiotic, this Fluorogen at about noon, 12 o'clock. And that way, or two o'clock would be even better, somewhere in between so that the antibiotic has a chance to go through your gut and then this follows it. And then the next antibiotic wipes out what it did, but we're kind of like playing whack-a-mole with it. And so that's how you do it while you're taking the antibiotic. And then when you've stopped the antibiotic, then continue to take this once a day. And generally probiotics are best taken with food. And this one is special because it's refrigerated. And so many probiotics are refrigerated to keep the good bacteria alive. So um, keep this one in the fridge. It can be left out for, um, it says two to three weeks, but it's most potent. The most living bacteria are going to be present in there if it's kept in the fridge. And then there are others. I've taken orthobiotic and you can like rotate them, like do this one day or this the next day or this for one week and this the next week or this for one month and this for the next month, that kind of thing to give your gut exposure to lots of, of the good bacteria. And then if you've really been through a lot and you need a mega probiotic, this one I recommend is called mega sporebiotic and it has the spores that grow the bacteria in it. And it's really helpful to rebuild, reinforce, and recondition your gut after you've been through a rough gut time, like taking antibiotics. So this one, you take two capsules, but I would not start with two. I would start maybe even with a half of a capsule because it's so intense. Start with a half a capsule every other day and then work it up to one every other day and then one every day and then to two a day. That's how I would get there because otherwise you might have serious stomach cramping and diarrhea that you don't want to deal with. We don't want to cause more misery than feeling good. So those are probiotics I recommend to help recover your gut microbiome after taking antibiotics. Is there anything else you can do? So what I've been doing is for lunch, as often as I can, I've been eating sauerkraut. And this is full of nature's probiotics. The way sauerkraut is made is just adding water and salt to chopped up cabbage. And that allows the naturally occurring bacteria to break it down. And so that bacteria is still there and good and it helps your gut as well. So that's one thing. Another thing is yogurt. 
You want to find a yogurt that has the right bacteria species in it. So this is one I like at Costco, and it has Streptococcus thermophilus, Lactobacillus bulgaricus. That's one of the most important. And the other one is Lactobacillus acidophilus. So if you can get those two, those two Lactobacillus species, those are the important ones to get in your yogurt. And then I actually use this to make my own yogurt that's even better. So you can take the strains that are in here and grow your own using milk. It's amazing. And then your gut microbiome goes all the way from your teeth to your anus. And so you need to not just have it down in the lower gut. You also need to help heal your throat area, your nasal sinuses, because it's draining into your gut, right? So some things you can do if you're having, you know, cold sinus issues is I have a whole video all about sinusitis. Check it out because it's got better descriptions. But there's this thing called a neti pot that you can pour salt water into your sinuses and it flushes it out. And it's really helpful, non-prescription and like fairly natural way to deal with it. And then I have this biocide and throat spray since I've been dealing with strep throat to help heal the back of my throat because the bacteria can hide in these biofilms and they, it can be hard for the antibiotic to get through. And so this helps to not like with herbs to help your throat basically recover. So that's the biocide and throat spray that I recommend that I'm personally using right now. And then if your antibiotic side effects include a yeast infection down yonder, probiotics can help to recover and you may need to go on an antifungal drug and so just ask your doctor, hey, I'm, you know, you gave me this antibiotic, now I'm having these side effects. Let them know, and they'll usually just prescribe you antifungal to help you clear that up as well. So then other alternatives to antibiotics include if you have a virus infection, the virus is the cause instead of antibiotic, then you don't need an antibiotic. And that's the best way to prevent the side effects is to not have to take it at all. And if you have a mild bacterial infection like sinusitis or bronchitis, really ask your doctor, are you sure this antibiotic is going to help? And watch my video about sinusitis for other alternatives that can help. So I recommend that you follow these instructions I've given you and do whatever you can to support your body and counteract these antibiotic side effects. Check out my website for direct links to these probiotics that I recommend and the throat spray so that it's easy to find exactly what you need to recover from taking antibiotics. Signing off is Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.